Good luck. All right, so we get to go to this game. Let's enable emotes only mode so we don't get advice during the game. And we'll, as always, give my thoughts as they occur. Um, owing to this two rating point disparity, clearly we are the favorite to win this game, right? Anyway, none of that ever matters. Um, that's my key point. And even pointing out the rating difference, it's just ratings aren't everything. And in the chess world, it's often thought to be a huge thing, and it's just not. All right, so note that had they pushed the Rook Pawn, we'd be able to play our center pawn immediately. Here we have to pick something a bit different. Um, and if bishops do exchange, this bishop drop forking the two pawns is still concerning. So let's close this diagonal and I guess make an attempt to play one of the swinging Rook openings that is not central foul Rook. Um, this is an interesting transposition. I've seen it before. I don't know the best way to counter it. And it might depend on your playing style what best really is. Okay, this is interesting too. Um, so normally I would consider just going straight into a fourth file rook opening. But um, I see that there, well... Uh, this is interesting for so many reasons. I was just watching a game uh, Muranaka played and commented, and he explained that uh, a silver on 6-3 or on 4-3, um, or in this case 4-6 and uh, whatever, you get the point. The silvers on these two squares could be targets for attack. Although it makes more sense like if your bishop and rook are piling on the square right in front which is not the case here. Um, but the other thing... Well, let's bring this silver out to combat this other silver. Um, moving this denies me the ability to offer a bishop exchange conveniently. There are still inconvenient ways that could be managed. Um, but yeah, we're going to defend what will eventually become the head of my bishop. Um, oh, they're playing right side fourth foul rook. Hey, we're going to get to play that thing. Okay, well, that's interesting. Um, how serendipitous. Uh, we'll get to try to play the thing. Um, note, I've never played Snow Roof before, uh, but yeah, there's a first time for everything. Alright, never mind. They might not be going for a rapid attack. Uh, let's just get my king out of here and figure out the rest later. If this is possible, I think it's possible. But yeah, if they move this gold and this gold, then, like, that'd be kind of weird. They'd have to move this silver out first. But if they were to do something like that, um, we'd have some idea what to do. Alright. Well, I guess we're not going quite that direction. Oh, we might be getting there via a different move order. Interesting. Um, maybe we are going there after all. <laughs> I've never played that castle before. I don't really understand the ideas behind it. Um... Well, in fourth file rook strategy, pushing the center pawn can still be useful, but here that's kind of sketchy. Um, let's push this just so eventually I'll have it if I need it. Um, in 
often this will save me in an end game if I, my king needs to run. This third foul pawn will make it harder for my king to run, but it's still possible. Um. Hmm. All right, we're going to claim the 5-5 five five square as our own. And I did mention this is sketchy, but I'm doing it anyway because my rook and my gold protect so many squares, and I can actually play my silver out to 5-3 and work out the rest when we get there. Um, right. And I've not had a chance to play this shape before. So I'm kind of curious how it settles. Um, so this is unusual at best. None of my generals are defending each other at the moment. My entire castle is very prone to attack. But um, it's an interesting position. So this knight could be the object of an attack if I had one. Um, I'm not sure I have an attack here. I'm not sure they do either. I am sorely tempted to move my knight in response to that. Um, but what does it... how does that help me? My castle's not complete. And so the question keeps being raised of where my gold generals belong in this opening. Um, yeah, I don't know. I am not sure. Well, we could move the king away from the center. That probably makes sense irrespective of where the rest of my pieces go. Um, but it is an important question to figure out sometime relatively soon where the rest of my generals belong here. Um, yeah, so I'm thinking of moving my gold up against this. Yeah, let's do that. So we have a one general castle, which is really weird. Um, it really begs the opponent to attack us, and so they attack. Um, but we have the attack staved off for now. I'm not sure that that matters in this position, but we don't want to get too cramped. We do want to leave this square as a place our bishop can run to. Okay. Our opponent seeks to exchange pieces. Uh, makes some sense, but... Some of the details here don't look right. Um, could I push the 5-5 five five pawn here? It really looks like I can. And then they push their silver, and then what? I don't know. My silver is blocking my rook. So that's why I want to push my center pawn to give my silver a place to run to. I want to motivate my silver to do something this game. Um...
Yeah, even if I push and they exchange pawns and I put my silver here, they trap my silver, I sack it for a knight, and then they drop the silver on my rook's head and my rook doesn't go anywhere. That's not so bright. Can I do better? Um, this actually is quite effective at stopping a lot of my attacks all by itself. That's impressive. All right, so if I take this and we exchange bishops and I push this pawn, I drop a bishop here. I'm threatening to... Yeah, this is fine. This is strange, but it's fine. Let's take it. And then we exchange bishops here, and then attack the knight. And the knight needs to be protected. And this is where I'm confused what my opponent's plan is, or could be. Um, either they're planning something aggressive, like hitting my rook, uh, which could make sense. Um, but I just take the knight. Or they're planning something defensive, and it's just my turn to attack them. I do have a bishop drop over here, hitting the rook, hitting this lance behind it. I've got a bishop drop on 5-5, five five, which looks scary, but doesn't really threaten anything because they put their gold in the corner and their gold in the corner traps their king for now until they push this pawn in front of the gold give their king somewhere to run to which eventually they'll do because my attack's not fast enough um but still i get the general idea of wanting to open up this file for their rook i just don't think this is the right mechanism to do that So, general principles are great, um, but details matter too. And, heck, if they drop the bishop here, I don't have to take it. I don't have to take the knight. I could just move the rook somewhere. Uh, I guess they drop a pawn in front of my rook. That wouldn't look so great, but uh, it's an idea. I guess I'm predicting a bishop drop somewhere on this diagonal here. Um, oh, I forgot to put up my 81 dojo badge. I forgot to crop the screen. Allow me to fix these things. Sorry about that. There we go. That's better. Sorry, I did not mean to cut that. Let's fix now. So, oh, this is sensible. Um, details still matter, but, hmm, not a bad idea in concept. I could take the pawn, rook takes, or I could even drop the bishop here. They attack my bishop, I have to move it, so they take a lance, they take my pawn and promote and hit my gold. So my best is probably to take the pawn outright, um, and then they do rook takes, and I drop a pawn, and they have something, I guess, maybe? I'm not sure. They could always drop a pawn on my knight's head, but it looks like things are more or less in order. Um, if I did a bishop 5-5 five five drop, they could put a pawn or some other piece in the way. Um, the 5-5 five five bishop drop is kind of interesting. Problem is they just take this pawn and, well, they can't do it right away, but they put a pawn in the way, my bishop doesn't have anywhere to go. I take the knight, they take the pawn, I take this pawn. They take my gold, they take their silver, they take 
they do rook takes knight. Um, yeah, so I'm one tempo slow on that. So we'll do the boring thing, but uh, it looks good enough, so... The main reason I wanted to spend so much time analyzing that is that if I had a direct win, I should just play it. But, um, yeah, here I have to give them one tempo that they can do anything with. I don't think this one tempo is enough for them. It is ironic, I was saying details matter, and I didn't have my stream layout fixed. Again, sorry about that. Um, I, yeah, I have a single monitor display here, so it's a bit tricky to both uh, run the stream and verify it's set up correctly. And since I play on several different sites, and each site has a different aspect ratio, etc., um, you might have gathered this already, but uh, yeah, getting things correct and doing a variety of different things uh, is not trivial. It's not hard, you just have to actually focus and do it. Alright, so if I do gold takes, um, this would be a waste of a move for gold. So, plus that would be enabling a bishop drop, forking my rook and gold, which I could go back and defend the rook, but is this really what we want to do? Well, maybe, actually. This might all make sense if first I put my bishop here. Or 5-5, five five, really. Now, 5-5 five five is a bit of an easy target, but back here, this protects the diagonal that they want to put their bishop on anyway hits the rook, they take the pawn, I drop my pawn here, the rook goes back, and then I take this for free and ask them what their next move is. This seems reasonable, and I've done similar things in other games. Um, although, actually, the pawn drop back here might not... Well, okay, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm getting excited by the idea of moving my silver back to hit the rook. Uh, I forgot this knight can actually just take a silver here. So, yeah, now my opponent has a choice. Um, I'm not sure what they're choosing. If they pin my bishop, I can take the bishop and drop it here again. If they put the bishop on this long diagonal, I guess here, um, I could take this knight. I could take this pawn. Now, if I take the pawn, they take my bishop and do this fork that we were just talking about. Um, yeah, so sensible enough. Uh, <laughs> so I can promote my bishop and threaten to take a silver, which would attack the rook. That seems decent. Taking the knight seems decent. Um, what could I do with a knight? I don't know. If I had a knight on this square, that would be great. But that takes multiple moves to get there. Um, if I move my knight forward to hit this knight, is there any trick that I... Well, it's always scary to give the opponent a knight. Yeah, if I just promote my bishop, like, I'm hitting a piece, they kind of have to respond to that. Dreaming about anything else is getting a little bit greedy. Um, yeah, let's just get this taken care of. My concern was that if they take my knight, and I take the silver, they could take here, and their rook's threatening to promote. But I just put a pawn right in front of the rook, and there's no more promotion threat. So, 
Uh, that concern's easily dealt with. Another concern would be as if they were to put a bishop on this diagonal. But I could just push this pawn. My castle is extremely, extremely vulnerable. So that's why I'm a bit jumpy at the moment. But um, there's no concrete threat. Other than me just taking a silver. Actually, I could put the silver down somewhere if I were really worried about this rook promoting. And then put another pawn in front of it and just say, like, no, 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 absolutely no promotion there. But that's not necessary. That's a bit overdoing it. Um, See, so yeah, I'm still threatening to take a knight. Um... I wish there was some trick and I could just corner the rook directly, but that would be too easy. All right, so this, okay, both of these pieces are defending the 5-7 point. Um, I could perpetual the rook back and forth with my promoted bishop. That doesn't seem worth it. Um... I could take the pawn for free, and they get their fork in, and they promote the knight, and that's not pleasant, and it's actually quite terrible. Um, I could move my knight out of harm's way, or toward the center. Um, that's cowardly. I could take the pawn and chase the knight. Um, I could push this pawn. I'm gaining a tempo on the rook. That doesn't really help me too much. Uh, well, there's a lot. Well, not taking the pawn, chasing the knight does ensure that like I don't get overrun on this square here which is currently being threatened. Yeah, let's do this. So taking the knight pins this pawn, allows me to do a knight drop to take this silver, which allows me to make more threats in the future. The downside of this is that they directly take my knight, um, but that costs a move. So... Winning the lance isn't that worth it here for me. So yeah, I need to defend against this threats on this square. And then this fork here is kind of nice. So they're probably going to scare um, my promoted bishop away from where it's currently at. I have a vague threat of just putting a knight in front of my pawn because they don't have any pawns in hand. Their rook would be out of threats at that point. Um, it would be kind of silly because my knight can't do anything here. But exchanging a knight for a silver... Well, actually just... Hmm, if I had another silver, that'd be kind of nice. Um... Okay. I guess we'll play the fork. Silvers are nice pieces. They really want to promote their rook, but it's not happening right now. Oh, they want to hit my bishop and shish kebab all my pieces here. Okay. Um, still, let's force the king to move. Um, while it does not have the opportunity to move toward the corner, let's force it to move. I mean, you could bring you could bring the king forward here. My guess is the king is probably going back. 
Um, and if the king is retreating, that makes it an easier target. Uh, well, at least it makes it easier to mate the king. I want to bring my other generals back toward my king very soon. So maybe next move I'll bring this back. Um, but yeah, right now we'll take this. So we're attacking this gold general. Um, yeah, and I think next I want to bring this silver back to give my rook some breathing room. Um, and try to defend my center. I could push this pawn forward. If rook takes, I have a fork. That wouldn't be bad. Yeah, I really want my rook to have some breathing room, but protecting against their rook promotion is very useful too. Um. Hmm. All right, so we can allow the rook to promote, and um, we could take a gold general. I guess they take our gold general. This is not a good strategy. This is a bluff. I should not have done this. I didn't really mean it. Um, hmm. So what do we do now? Generally, I don't conduct bluffs, but here apparently I do. Um, well, maybe it's not a bluff, because I take their gold, they take my gold, I check here, and yeah, actually, I mate first. Um, I shouldn't gamble, but um, bluffing is okay if it's not really a bluff, but um, yeah, that was accidental. Uh, yeah, in general, this back here needs to be protected. Um, so I really should get on that. But my attack here is so strong, too. Alright, so I want to vacate squares in front of my rook. Um, it's interesting they have this attack. Okay. I need to use a piece in defense now. My king is just super vulnerable. My gold is vulnerable. Um, we need to address some of these awful weaknesses. These pieces on the left side of the board are not participating in my king's defense. Okay. Well, spotted. Um, I seem to be in trouble. I can't mobilize my pieces fast enough. So silver 5-5 five five is tempting, for lack of some other right. Well, no, then they get a bishop drop here. That's not super bright. Um, okay, let's start to open spaces for my rook start to complete my castle that never got completed. Um, okay, yes. Again, well spotted. Um, my king might be running in a bit. And maybe that's okay. Are they really going to sacrifice this bishop? Why did they put it here?
There were other places to put it. Okay, we'll try to use my bishop to cover as many squares as possible. If they promote, my king just runs and just continues running until there's nowhere else to run to. Um, right, so we're in check. We cannot resist this knight. If we do resist the knight, then we get a bishop to the face, so that's not great. Um, what is kind of nice here is that I've, um, since this bishop is hanging, we get a tempo uh, when eventually it's our turn to respond. Uh, like, this bishop is threatened, so... Uh, yeah, we're going to have to break up our castle to defend here. And they will have, like, a knight drop or other pieces that can drop on my castle's head. Um, I guess we bring the silver back. Or we want to move this out of the way so I can finally start attacking. But it's kind of difficult to do here. I'd like to put a pawn, but it's not my turn. All right, we're in check. <sighs> Do I run into an attack or away from it? As a chess player, I'm always drawn into the flames. Um, I'm like, nah, it's never that bad. How bad could it be? But in Shogi, things can attacks can get pretty severe pretty quickly. Um, so running with the king is often valuable. Well, they don't have a pawn drop here. They do have, like, a silver drop, which doesn't immediately work. And I'm confused. Um, I don't see how an attack prevails here. This looks like the safest place for my king. My king does not look safe at the center of the board. And now I can get a pawn down to defend my king. Unless they just choose to give away their bishop. Or if they, like, they spend time to defend the bishop, I can put a pawn down and say, Hey, I had this planned all along. I'm just fine here. Um, for now. My king's not safe in the center, which is why I have to go this way. I could put a lance down, which is not smart. Um, a lance would be useful over here. Right, so they defend. Um, so I should also defend. If I have any brains, we're going to defend. And now if he tries something crazy, I don't know how we'd go. Um, but yeah, leading the attack with the bishop in such a prone position was kind of an error. The bishop would be just as effective back here attacking unless I could in interpose a piece, but each interposition would cost me a piece. Um, oh, that's nice. That's good. Uh, well played. Alright, so it's just a gold. Um, my knight also has a useful square, and I'm threatening to break up their castle. I'm also directly threatening their bishop.
But I think my threat to break up their castle is more important than my attack on their bishop. Um, but also, if I do take here, they're going to do something about my double attack on this gold. They want just one more piece, just one more piece, etc. They, they're they constantly in need of a fourth attacking piece around my king. And I keep coming up with some kind of counterattack to keep them busy. So my next idea, I think, is dropping a lance here, striking this pawn. Um, unless there's somewhere really great for me to put this knight. Okay, I wasn't using the rook. You can have it. Um, my rook wanted to be active, but I never had time to activate it. You can have it. Oh wait, are they also attacking my king? They are. It's, my situation's not going to improve. If I just idly defend, let's attack. At some point I might have to do exchange bishops or something here, but for now, uh, their castle is quite vulnerable, so we should seize the moment. Uh, I just walked into mate, didn't I? Yep, that's how that goes. I get overconfident and excited about my own plan and walk into a very simple checkmate. Um, there's really nothing I can do here. I should have exchanged bishops. All right, well, good game. Well played. Uh, so this is a teaching ladder game. Uh, so it means after the game we get to review and figure out what happened. Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, I got a bit too excited. I didn't manage my time correctly. Um, curious throughout the game exactly what happened, but, um, oh yeah, this is one of those fourth file rip move order things. Um... Yeah. Yeah, Elmo Castle's nice because you don't have to commit so many pieces to your king's defense. It can strike later if... Well, I got overconfident, but it can be vulnerable because your silver and bishop are so close together. So it can be attacked from the side or by a knight right here. But, um... I wonder... Yeah, I wonder what this is for. Like, so you played it to 5-9, but I... I guess there's a number of places this could do, go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This shape. Uh, I didn't know this gold being next to us could be part of it. Um, oh, wow. It sounds like that was quite an adventure when you had that. Yeah, it felt like this game could... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's quite strong. I think it's still vulnerable to the knight attack I had, but I just walked into mate, so what can I say? Um, 
Uh, it is a bit of a compact castle, so at least the rest of the board kind of easy for me to seize, but I didn't do... Oh. Okay, so we have a suggestion. Yeah, this is more flexible. That makes sense. Yeah. Yes, that's a really nice castle, because you can build it quickly, and it's quite strong. It saves a move, I think, over Mino. And your king is uh, slightly closer to the center, less prone to edge attacks, so that's pretty nice. Um, yeah, I admit I'm not... There's just a ton of fourth file rook theory for me to learn here. Um, although uh, it's fairly straightforward in each case to see what to do, but there's a lot to learn. So I tend up getting burned when I play this, but uh, we play it anyway because we want to learn. Um, this game, I never activated my rook, which is bad. Yeah, this would have been more flexible, giving me more different ways to activate the rook. Um, So, yeah, so we could bring this bishop up, and then, yeah, this, uh, if the knight strikes my knight, bishop, if necessary, could retreat, although it's protected right here, but, um, there's, yeah, a lot of, oh, this pawn. That's kind of cool. I've seen this in other shapes, but... Interesting. Huh. Wow. Okay. So they just not even to bring the knight out. Um then okay. If he passes like that we can do this. Um, hmm. I've not seen the shape before. Right, so, okay. Well, so all of our generals are disconnected, but it's fine, because the opponent's not attacking just yet. Um... And the main threat of pushing on the second file is kind of moot there. Um, so, pawn 5-5. Five five. Oh, we take this. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. We've def uh, we're defending against bishop drops. There's a lot of bishop drop. Okay. Did not expect this. Um, we again offer a bishop exchange. I'm not so sure this would happen, but, um, interesting. Okay, pawn takes. Yeah, this is a good square for the silver to sit on because it defends the center and defends our king. None of the bishop drops immediately work here. Um, it'd be quite a bit of work for either player to get a successful bishop drop in, unless that happens. Okay, yeah, we want to deal with this invading knight before we try anything too aggressive. <sighs> I like responding to attacks with attacks, like I'd be tempted to just drop the bishop here and see what happens, but um, this is clearly superior because the opponent doesn't have a good move. Um, but yeah, otherwise, dropping the bishop, promoting it, hitting the lance would be fun, but yeah. Well...
Okay. Oh. Interesting. So yeah, the plans drop the rook back and over and eventually strike on this file. I was wondering what the point was, other than just, this is really nice, it controls a lot of bishop drops and prevents them, but controls a lot of territory so bishop drops can't happen, but yeah, it's good to have a plan. Okay, yeah, I guess um, that deals with the particulars of this position that, um, yeah, That's quite a line. So yeah, this pawn drop would just run into covering all the spaces, then taking the knight, and then eventually getting to do all that, unless you've broken on the fourth or the third file first. Um, which, now that go to no longer... Or Sente no longer has a pawn in hand, it's possible um, that I could actually break on one of these files and not have to worry about that big elaborate idea. Yeah. Yeah, so this all goes back to however we got here. So the idea is bishop 3-3, three, three, and if this, then you can temporize with this and eventually do that uh, plan. So, yeah, when the fourth file rook opening, you often end up swinging the rook to various other squares. Um, you, you often have, well, especially if they haven't pushed their rook's pawn, you have time to move it around. Um, hmm. Um, yeah, so this kind of, I don't know if I would still do the third file pawn push, um, doesn't seem right here. I'm trying to remember what Hidechi said about this sort of thing. Yeah, we're early enough in the game that neither player could have blown this yet. No, this is complicated. Yeah. I guess this is a different game. We'll encounter that game when we get to it, but at least I don't have to worry about getting attacked on the left side and accidentally letting the rook promote, as I often do. Um, instead, I did this, which breaks my castle and makes it easier, or more prone to attack. And we spend forever defending against things, and stuff gets complicated in a hurry. Um, and this is tempting, but um, I'm not sure. Wait, why did... I took that. Um... Yeah, I think taking that is still correct. I mean, during the game I considered if this, then you just drop a pawn in front. Uh, so yeah, this, this is not so easy for me at all. Um, so this is why I played this way. And... Um, yeah, likewise, in other variations, uh, like if I played this, um, what did I think was going to happen here? I thought something like this might happen. Um, So, uh, yeah, that's why I played what I did. I think I did reasonably well for quite a few moves. Um, 
thought this was good. I thought this was good. Uh, I thought this was great. Um, still have to do something about this and this and something like that. I don't know. And yeah, this attack escalated very quickly and I was just not prepared for it. Um... Oh, I wonder. Maybe here there was some trick. Yeah. So, yeah, if I want to survive this game, this sort of thing might be necessary. Um, and perhaps, uh, even back here, I should be considering this. Yeah. So, in general, I've been super allergic to pushing this pawn because a bishop can attack my king very easily, but um, here I might be okay. Okay, so the notion here... Um, I guess we'll defend my castle. Since I have a silver, I can use it. Normally I'd want to put my silver way up here and um, be really... Oh, wait, they can put another knight down. Hmm, I didn't see that. Okay, yeah, this is actually difficult to defend against. So, yeah... Uh, two knights are powerful. Yeah, we have to run with the king because eventually they're going to do knight takes anyway. Regardless which knight does take, they're going to do knight takes. And I'll have to defend somehow. And it's just not easy. Um, I might survive. So that would be my accomplishment here is surviving. But, yeah, this is... All my pieces are on the wrong side of the board. I did stop the Rook from promoting, so I did that much, but... Yeah, somehow Shogi has a greater calling than just protecting against a Rook promotion. Um... So, yeah... So, I'm not sure... Hmm. Yeah, so I should not have engaged in this thing here. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I mean, there it might be okay, but this is just asking for a lot of trouble. That uh, I mean, we could see it. We could see some of this through. Um, so yeah, we play that. Whoops. All right. 
Yeah. It's just going to iterate through the move list. Yeah, we could do pawn drop here. I guess that's okay. Um, but it's just really not easy to defend my king. Well, this might help a little bit, but not much. Um, I guess we attack again. This, why not? Uh, okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, I guess taking's appropriate. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, gold would be a nice general to use for defense. Um... Okay, so yeah. I guess there are details to be concerned with here. And that seems like an important detail. Huh. This position's more resilient than I get credit for, but still very different than the sort of position I usually play. I usually have a very nice, tough castle and no attack. And so I here I find myself playing with an attack and having no idea what to do. Um, okay, so yeah, we can play this out. Okay, so this is how we finally get this tempo that we've been seeking. Jeez, that's brutal. Wow. Okay, what's this? Oh, nothing's defending the so oh, this lance. Um Wow. This is crazy. Um, so, yeah, the lance drop doesn't save this. Um, not that gold takes token was necessary in the first place, although it, it helps, but yeah, this attack against my king is just a move too slow. That if I attack correctly, I should be somewhat better here. Uh, this would be an example of an, a correct attack, but I think there are still quite a few resources for my opponent, but yeah, my attack is playable here. It's not a mistake to attack, as I was claiming it was. I just have to, I did see this pawn drop during the game and I wimped out. And this is playable as a pawn drop, perhaps even better. Um, hmm. Uh, I'm just so optimistic um, for my opponent here. So like there's this, this is striking. There's this. I don't know. Um, oh. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, so turns out I don't really have anything to be afraid of here. Yeah. Or at least not from my own move. So time pressure makes a fool of me once again. But it was a good game. Um, what, what else do we consider? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> mm. 
Yeah. This is an interesting game. Um. Uh. Um. Uh, Uh, I feel like I'm getting very much a lesson in this, uh, so, yeah, um, that's kind of what happened here. All right, um, thanks for the game, yeah, nicely played, uh, very instructive. I apologize to my opponent that I flubbed this so badly, but, you know, that's kind of what happens in the teaching ladder, so. We play things that we haven't done a thousand times before, and we're forced to improvise on the spot, and it's a 15-minute game, so stuff happens. Um, I was panicking during the game, honestly, and you saw it through my time management. Um... Now, like, okay, maybe taking the bishop could have extended the game quite a bit. Whether it's bishop takes or knight takes, both would have prevented me from immediately succumbing to checkmate. But, uh, yeah, a lot of... I missed a lot of things. Um, the other thing I'd idly considered... Wait, why this knight drop first and then the silver drop? I wonder. We did that in that order. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, and then we had this question during the game, and I just... I guessed very poorly. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, um, that was a teaching moment. Yeah, thanks uh, to Escape Artist for the great help with this analysis. Uh, they say, for your finger memory, play the good move. So... We're gonna play the better move here. Um, yeah, this would have still been. I was scared of this, but and I'm still dying here. But um, it's um, it's at least a game at this point. Um, yeah, they say those who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Um, uh, and. Escape Artist had a point that, like, I could actually attack here if I knew what I were doing. Um, but since I didn't know, that didn't help. Yeah. I didn't have time to do this really slow reorganization thing. This, again, would have been a sensible way to try. Actually, this is not the right position for that. Uh, this would have been a decent place for that. Threatening this, threatening that, etc. So, like, yeah, I had resources here. I just have to find them. Um, yeah, during the game, I was modestly concerned about that, but anyway. Uh, the idea is, after a bishop exchange, you drop another bishop here. They're threatening this, and eventually can maybe break down my center, but... It's just so abstract. They spent so much time taking my lance and knight that... Okay, this was silly, but... Um... Yeah. So, yeah, I have to seize the moment. Recognize it. Um... And also recognize my own weaknesses here. And not step back into the corner no matter how safe I think it is, unless I actually have enough generals to defend my king. They said four pieces is a mate. Can I look at this final position and see? That's not four pieces, but that's just a general principle. Well, actually, I'm counting incorrectly. One, two, three. And the gold drop, that is four pieces. I miscounted. I forgot this bishop was part of the attack. So, yeah, uh, this was a good teaching moment. 
uh, thanks both to Escape Artist as well as to Fugasuki for this interesting game.